everyone. Uh, my name is Gary Hinsdale, and uh, if you didn't know that, then I guess it's all right because I haven't been here as long as everybody else, so uh, I'm kind of the straggler. Uh, but today I will be talking about um, the short story "Jesus Shaves" um, by uh, David Sedaris, and uh, it's a pretty interesting story. All right, so the first thing that I want to clear up. Uh, yes, this is an Old Spice bow tie, and uh, I feel like a powerful man when I'm wearing it, so I decided to wear it for my presentation today. Um, but uh, let's talk a little bit about David Sedaris. He was born on December 26, in 1956, in Johnson City, New York. After graduating art school in 1987, he drew attention for public readings from his diaries, leading to an acclaimed appearance on NPR in 1992, and he is 63 years old. Sedaris soon became the best-selling author of such books as Barrel Fever, Naked, and Me Talking Pretty One Day, earning a devoted following for his hilarious recollect, uh, recollections of his early years, family life, and experiences in foreign countries. He knew he wanted to be a writer by about age 25, and he honored his craft while attending the School of Art Institute of Chicago. After graduating in 1987, he taught writing part-time and began reading from his diary at a club. One reading caught the attention of Ira Glass, a Chicago public radio, uh, who invited Sedaris to appear on his program, The Wild Room. And this is where his career kind of had that launching point and, and kind of took off. So let's get into um, the short story, Jesus Shaves. The first part of Jesus Shaves starts in a French class. Um, and this American girl is trying to, you know, learn French and, and uh, be able to have a fluent conversation with other people. Um, and in that class, there is a Polish, Italian, and a Moroccan student, and they are all in there trying to learn um, about, you know, about the French language and the French culture. So um, it first starts out um, in the story uh, talking about French, cla uh, French uh, holidays. Um, so this includes uh, Bastille Day and some other holidays that they are talking about. And uh, the, the, the dialogue of the story is mostly, you know, it's kind of hard English to understand um, because they are talking to their French teacher um, in French. So in the second paragraph of the, um, of the story, it uh, mentions how the students were uh, looking in their textbooks and they were trying to match certain pictures with certain holiday, French holidays. Um, and they and they stumble on Easter, and the Moroccan student asks, um, "What what is Easter?" And and the the, the teacher asks the class to describe uh, what Easter is to the student. And the poles start to start to lead the charge, and they say it's a it's a party for a little boy of God who calls himself Jesus. And you know people in here who um, follow the Christianity religion know that that is not true it's i mean it's kind of a party after but not really the later on the the polls keep going on and say they they call himself jesus and then he be die one day on two so you can see how the the french is kind of broken there how it's kind of hard to pronounce um in english so kind of in like the um, the fifth paragraph down, um, it says that simple nouns such as cross and resurrection uh, were beyond their grasp just because they um, didn't know very much French at that time and didn't know um, what to say um, about Easter. And so they ended up talking about food instead. And uh, someone said, the Italian nanny said, uh, Easter is a party for to eat of the lamb. Um, one, two, may eat of the chocolate. And, and the Moroccan student was confused on why um, chocolate was involved with a meal. And, and the teacher asks, who brings the chocolate? And the American student, um, who um, is narrated in first person here, um, raises her hand and says, the rabbit of Easter. 
he brings of the chocolate. And everybody is kind of shocked that a rabbit would bring chocolate into people's homes um, on the night of Easter. Sedaris says, my classmates reacted, though, as I attributed to the liver of the Antichrist. So they were kind of distraught about that. Sedaris goes on and said, he come in the night when one sleep on a bed with hand he have the basket and foods. So he just he's kind of describing the Easter Bunny and, and coming into people's homes and, and giving everybody chocolates. The teacher sadly starts to shake her head as if, you know, the American culture is like a sin um, to all of the world. And she goes, no, no, here in France, the chocolate is brought by the big bell that flies in from Rome. <laughs> Sedaris uh, writes, uh, I called for, I, it says, I called for a timeout, but how, do the, how does the bell know where you live? And uh, the teacher responds, well, how does a rabbit? So they were kind of going back and forth here on uh, different cultures and what people believed. And Sedaris uh, kind of jokingly writes in the next paragraph, uh, it was a decent point, but at least the rabbit has eyes. So they were just kind of going back and forth on, uh, you know, kind of disagreeing on certain cultures and, and uh, what everybody else believed. But the entire goal of this was to teach the Moroccan student what Easter was and he says uh, on the next page nothing we said was of any help to the Moroccan student a dead man with long hair supposedly living with her father a leg of lamb served with palm fronds and chocolate confused and disgusted she shrugged her massive shoulders and turned her attention back to the comic book she had hidden beneath her binder and so she really didn't uh, care because you know she wasn't uh, a Christian she she was a Muslim and she didn't really understand what was going on. Um, and that's pretty much the summary of the story. Uh, now let's go into um, kind of the themes that, the themes and uh, kind of a deeper meaning uh, that Sedaris put into this short story. So there's one deeper meaning that I really want to dive into um, that really caught my interest and and I kind of chose this story because you know I am a Christian and I go to church regularly and I thought that this story would be easy to comprehend because it had the word Jesus in it um, it swears a couple times in here so that uh, obviously was not the case um, so uh, behind the all of the comedy and the fast-paced dialogue um, Sedaris shares with his readers much a much deeper message um, he expresses through his characters um, that there's more to more to religion than just you know the food they get together. Um, it's really about your faith um, and the religion that you believe in. Um, during many of the hol the holidays, religious people are often sidetracked by family get-togethers, gifts, food, candy. But there's always important religious concepts behind every holiday. Um, you know, you look at Christmas, you look at Easter. Um, there's 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 two prime examples right there where we we look at you know the gifts and the get-togethers but really there's there's a faith behind that um you know jesus being born and and then jesus dying for for the sins of the of, of the world so it's kind of it's kind of you know explaining in here that we need to um not look at the get-togethers the the food and the gifts that we get at these certain holidays it's the faith that we get to, you know, um, absorb when we are celebrating these holidays and coming closer to, you know, God or whatever religion that that you believe in. You're coming closer to to that uh, figure. Um, and I think that uh, everybody in this class will get a great kick out of the last line. Um, I found it to be very funny. In conclusion, uh, Sedaris kind of puts. Uh, you know, comedy and a fast-paced dialogue behind um, kind of a deeper meaning in uh, in religion, and uh, it was kind of a funny story to read. 